In a previous video, we talked all about the monsters in Dragonbane, and from that, we learned that things in this game can be a touch on the deadly side. Game Masters here, and today I want to go over the basics of combat, and this will help us to answer the big question that we kept asking in that video about the monsters, is it worth it? And that is, is the combat that you are about to enter worth the risk, or would you be better off cruising on and avoiding a potential lethal battle? In Dragonbane, combat is played in rounds. Each round lasts roughly 10 seconds. As with other games, you'll want to determine initiative to see who goes first. Dragonbane uses cards to determine this, and the action itself is called Drawing the Initiative. You can also use a regular deck of cards. There are 10 cards in all, but of course, if you have more than uh, 10 players or and monsters that, that combine 10 or more, you'll need a regular deck. But each one is numbered in order up to 10. You shuffle them and each player draws a card. The number drawn represents when it is your turn in battle. On your turn, you can also choose to wait. In essence, you will swap your initiative card with someone who would normally go after you. You can even trade with NPCs. Monsters cannot choose to wait, and in some instances they have multiple actions, so they would draw multiple initiative cards and their attack or action would happen as it gets to that respective number. After all actions have happened and everyone has had a turn, the Game Master will collect the cards, shuffle, and everyone will draw again at the start of the next round. You'll keep doing this until, until either the monster or you are, are dead. During your turn, you can move and perform one action. Role-playing comes into play here, and you will describe how you want to move and exactly what action you wish to perform. You can perform your action and then move, or move and then perform your action. If there is a challenge during this, the GM will have you roll dice to determine the outcome. Actions can be pretty much anything you can think of. Feel free to get creative here. But common actions might be dashing into combat. Uh, dash allows you to double the, the movement rate in that specific round. And this is great for closing gaps between you and the monster in question. Or you could attack, either right up face to face or, or from a distance. Just depends on the weapon that you're about to use. You might cast a spell or use your healing skill to try to save someone who has experienced uh, <laughs> too much combat. You also have a neat mechanic called free actions. Free actions are more or less minor actions. Uh, drawing your weapons, dropping to the ground, dropping an item, uh, even shouting are all things that you can do that won't burn your main action, but you can only perform one free action. In some situations, you may also get a reaction. For example, if a monster is swinging or down upon you, you may have a chance to dodge. This will use up your action for the round, but should you dodge successfully, well, that could be the difference between life or death. Movement in Dragonbane is super simple. It's calculated in meters, and normally your movement rate is equal to uh, to that. However, there are a few special circumstances. We mentioned dash a moment ago. It can allow you to double your movement, or you can simply stand there and crouch down. Standing or crouching fall under the free action, and don't expend any of your actual movement rates. But because you can only spend one free action, you can't crouch down and then stand up, as that would be two free actions. You can make a horizontal leap, provided you make a successful acrobatics dice roll. You can open a closed door, or attempt to unlock a locked one. Like what we have in Dungeons & Dragons, there is an uh, attack of opportunity. Dragonbane calls this a free attack. In essence, if you move away from a monster or enemy, or should one move away from you, uh, an evade roll is made by the individual moving away. If that roll fails, then the one standing still gets to make a free attack that cannot be parried or dodged. That said, involuntary movements do not trigger a free attack. For example, if you're knocked back 5 meters by the monster's tail, that wouldn't trigger a free attack. Attack. You can also attempt a sneak attack. First, you'll want to make a successful sneaking roll, and you can do this for both a melee attack as well as for a ranged attack. Should you make a successful sneaking roll, your attack is considered surprising, and you can choose any initiative card that you want. You also get a boon to your attack. A boon is taking two 20-sided dice, rolling them, and choosing the lower of the two numbers. In Dragonbane, you want to roll low. Low is good, and I admit it's kind of entertaining to hear someone say, oh, awesome. You, you rolled a natural one. I talk a bit about dice mechanics and go over boon rolls and bane rolls in a different video, so be sure to check that one out. Oh, and, and should you be using a weapon with the subtle attribute, you can add an extra damage die to it. For example, if you use a knife which has uh, subtle, it normally deals 1d8 damage. With a successful sneak attack, it can do 2d8 damage. 
Terrain can also impact both movement as well as attempts to attack. For example, if you're fighting in a cramped space, most weapons will roll with a bane on their rolls. If the terrain is rough, it's difficult to move through. Uh, you'll need to make an acrobatics roll. Should you fail, you've just fallen over and you lose the rest of your movement for this round. If you are fighting in an area that is dimly lit, you'll have bane on your ranged attacks. Now that we know how to move and how to make attacks, let's check out melee combat. Two meters is the rough distance that you need to be from what it is that you want to attack. The amount of damage you inflict is based on the weapon type. For example, we previously mentioned a knife. If you are attacking with that, you'd be doing 1d8 damage. However, the enemy's armor can absorb some of that damage. For example, if you were to swing or stab at an orc, it typically wears studded leather, which gives it an armor rating of 2. Assume that you rolled a 5 with your knife's attack. You'd then subtract the armor rating from that roll, and you'd be dishing out 3 damage. Damage. But two, depending on what your attribute scores are, you may have damage bonus that you can add to that three. You can have up to three weapons on you that you can use in combat. The weapon must be drawn to use, but that is something you can typically do before entering combat. But should you choose to switch weapons up in mid-fight, that's certainly an option. Should you knock your opponent to the ground. They are considered prone, and attacks against them are done with a boon, plus you can dish out an extra d6 damage. If you happen to roll a dragon, which is uh, rolling a natural one, again, remember, dragon bane, you want to roll low, that is considered a critical hit. At this point, you can either roll double the amount of dice uh, of that weapon's damage, then you'll add your bonuses, or you can choose to make a second attack as a free action, or if you used a piercing weapon, you can roleplay it out that you found a weakness in the monster's armor, and your critical hit will not see the the armor rating subtracted from the damage that is dished out from that weapon. If an enemy is coming at you, you can attempt to parry or dodge. Dodging lets you roll an evade check. This is a reaction and it consumes your initiative, and as such, if you've already had your turn this round, you won't be able to dodge. Successfully dodging allows you to move up to two meters away, and this does not trigger that attack of uh, uh, the, 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 the free attack from the monster. Parrying is also a reaction and will consume your initiative, but assume that you are able to parry and the enemy's attack is deflected by your shield or weapon, you don't take any damage. However, they still calculate their damage and should that damage exceed your weapon or, or shield's durability, it is damaged and cannot be used again until you repair it. Should you find that your weapon has been shattered or your shield has been shattered, you can look around the environment for an improvised weapon. This might be something as simple as a rock or a discarded rusty weapon, or you might can get creative and while in battle near a, a tuft of grass, you may find a snake that you can pick up and throw at the enemy that will inflict d6 damage, while at the same time also inflicting poison, which can cause an additional d6 amount of damage per round. Sometimes improvised weapons can be more deadly than the sword you had in your hand. If you want to stay a safe distance from the monster in question, and you've got yourself a nice bow or a sling, then you can perform a ranged attack. Ranged attacks are performed by weapons such as slings, crossbows, longbows, even spears, and is a great way to maintain a somewhat safe distance in combat. I say somewhat, because as we discovered in the monsters video, some monsters have some wildly long distances that they can move. Different weapons have different ranges. A sling, for example, can, up to, can hit up to 20 meters away, whereas a longbow can hit a target up to 100 meters away. By the way, 100 meters is roughly 330 feet. Critical hits work in a similar fashion that melee critical hits do, as does dodging. To parry, a ranged attack requires a shield, although to be honest, when, when I ran this, we homebrewed that you could attempt to parry uh, an arrow with a sword. We just thought the role-playing aspect was super fun. If your target is partially obscured, perhaps by a large boulder or a tree, you can still attempt to attack, but you'll just roll with a bane. Once in the thick of combat, regardless if you've made a melee or a ranged attack, there's always a risk of getting mushed. If your hit points ever drop to zero, you cannot perform any further actions. You instead will have to make a death roll against your constitution. Once you've made three successful death rolls, you'll recover d6 hit points. Should you fail three death rolls, you die. You can only make the death roll once per round. If something hits you while you're down, that counts as a failed death roll. 
healing can be done by resting, uh, camping, or or uh, and there are also spells that can heal. And yes, Dragonbane does have healing potions. Cost a mere 50 gold and can heal 2d6 hit points. There are stronger potions of healing out there as well, but they are going to cost a little bit more. Strategy should be used when entering combat and in really in any given situation, but especially before entering combat. Like we posted in the monster video, you got to ask yourself, is the reward for fighting this monster worth it? Most of the time it likely will be, and while combat in Dragonbane is not complex in any way, it can be brutal. I want to thank everyone for watching today's video. If you found it entertaining in any way, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Brian and I've been playing and running role-playing games since the 1980s. I also want to thank these mighty fine YouTube and Patreon supporters as their contributions to the channel have made it so that I didn't need to take on a sponsored ad for today's video. Over on Patreon, I make fun adventure goodies. For example, I recently made a 16-page fix for the new Vecna Eva Ruin adventure. It actually includes Vecna in it. And I also created up a Vecna stat block based on his god form. I've got an endless dungeon that I'm about to release over there, as well as a classic themed adventure called the Broken Arrow Inn that's going to drop around mid-July, so be sure to check that out. Also be sure to check out my Game Master's Discord, links down in the description. We have some great gaming conversations over there, and I actually use a lot of what we talk about in that uh, Discord as suggestions for videos for this YouTube channel. So if you'd like to help shape the direction that this channel grows in the future, join us. When I found Dragonbane, it immediately jumped out at me. I knew that I wanted to do a series of Dragonbane Basics videos. For one, it, it helps me to understand the rules better, but it also has put me in contact with a lot of other gamers that have been looking for this specific style of game. I am not disappointed in how it plays, and I've got a couple of more videos in this series, so be sure to check out this playlist that I've made. It's only going to grow as I add more to it. What is an aspect of Dragonbane you'd like to know more about? Talk to me down in the comments, and until next our paths cross, may you not shatter your weapon.